Let's solve the code was challenge vowel count. Return the number of vowels in a given string. We will consider A, E, I, or U as the vowels for this kata, but not Y. The input string will only consist of lowercase letters and no spaces. So select your language of choice. I'm going to use C sharp and I'm going to press train. There we go. So now we've got our code. We have an integer vowel count equal to zero. We're going to place our code here and then we're going to return back vowel count. So let's maximize this and let's get started. So if you assume our string has the value of ABBA, let's see how this is going to work. So we want to loop through all of these characters one by one and check if they're equal to A, E, I, O, and U. So let's get started. We can have a for int i equal to zero. i is less than the string dot length. This will give us every single position inside our string variable. And then we can say i plus plus right at the end. And we can add our curly braces and just indent this slightly. And inside here, we're going to have each character one by one. So in the first iteration, we're going to have a, then we're going to have b, and then we're going to have a again, just to complete the entire string. So let's get started. So inside here, in order to be able to access each character individually, we're going to use the notation of the square brackets. So str square brackets i will give us the index we're up to starting at zero because strings are zero based. So when i is zero, so it'll be str square bracket zero, that is going to be equal to a. And notice it's a single quote, not a double quote. Double quote means that it's a string, whereas a single quote means that it's a character. And therefore str1 is equal to b, and so on and so forth. When we do our loop, we're going to be able to gain access to each character through this notation. So now we can run an if statement that checks the condition. And then if that condition is true, we can simply say vowel count plus plus. Now, what is it the condition that we need to do? So we need to check this string value for either a, e, i, o, and u. So let's put it in str i dot equals. And then let's just put in a. So this will check if the value that comes in is equal to a. And if it is, this will return back true and it'll increment vowel count. But of course, we don't need to just check for A, we need to check for E, I, O, U as well. So let's chain them inside this if statement. So let's take this and we can copy it. And what operator do we need to do here? An AND or an OR? Now it's only ever going to be equal to one character at one given point. One character cannot be equal to the same thing. If this is A, then this can only ever be A and it can't be also equal to E. So we shouldn't use and in this case because it's not multiple conditions that are going to be correct. It's just one condition inside this chain. So let's remove the ands and put a paste. So now we have if it's equal to a or it's equal to a. So now let's change this a to an e and then let's continue like this. And then we have e and then we have i. And we can move this down into the next line. And then we can have o. And then finally we can have u. Perfect. So now if it matches A, or E, or I, or O, or U, then it will return back true for this if statement condition, and then we'll increment the vowel count. So let's actually zoom out and have a little run of that just as it is. So let's have a look at the test down here. We have kata get vowel count, which will be calling our function, and because it's a static, you can reference it using the class, followed by dot vowel count, which has got it right here. And then we have our parameters, which is just one string, and that should return us back with five. And our vowels here, the A here, a A another A here, and another A, and another A, and another A. So in this case, there is simply only five A's inside the string and none of the other vowels. So let's hit test. Perfect, so we passed all of the test. Now that we've figured out one method to be able to do it, let's have a look and see if we can store all of these values inside an array and then work it out that way. So let's maximize it again. And inside here, we can actually have a character array of our vowels. And we can say vowels is equal to a new character array. And then we can immediately initialize the array. So we can say A, E, I, O, and finally U. So now our character array has indeed five positions. We don't need to type five in here because the compiler can count how many options you have in here and it'll type in the parameters for you. And in this case, it'll be the length. It's up to you if you want to type it in but the compiler will be able to calculate it for you so you don't have to do that additional step. So now of all the vowels, every time we go through one of the characters, instead of chaining the if statement like this, we're actually going to use another for loop inside here. So let's comment this section out and let's have a look and see how it's done. So this outer loop will go around all of the characters inside our string. And then once we've reached 
string 0, A for example, we need to check that A for each one of these positions. And in order to do that, we need a little for loop. So we can say for each var vowel in vowels. And then we can open the condition and we can say if the vowel, which are this local variable here, and we're using var, but this actually expands to a character because the character is what is going to be in our array. We have an array of characters, so each one will be a simple character. So if the val we're up to, and it's going to be A, E, I, or U, if any one of these is equal to the character up to inside the for loop, then we'll increment val count. So we can say dot equals, and that's going to be equals to the string I. And then here we can simply do val count plus plus. So just to have a little quick recap, we make a character array called vowels and we initialize it to A, E, I, or U. And then as we're looping around all of the characters inside the string, we're actually going to be looping around the character array as well. So every character inside our string, we're actually going to be checking every single vowel position to make sure that it matches or not. And if one of them does match, we can increment the vowel count. So let's zoom out and give that a try. With the previous code commented out, let's run test. And as you can see, this also passes and it works just fine. This is a nicer option because in the future, if vowels were to increase, or maybe the pattern that you're matching is actually going to include and be bigger in the future, you can just chain them using commas, and then you can have other characters inside here. And it's very easy to do that because as you see, if this were to be true, then you could actually just keep this code exactly the same because it's a for each. Now the problem with this approach is it's going to get quite long winded. And as you can see, it won't even fit on one line. We're going to need two lines for it. And because of that, you know that this solution is kind of long and lengthy. Now, if we just added that BC at the end, in this case, you'd have to copy and paste the condition and then change this one to B and then paste it again and change this one to C. And as you can see, this is getting very quickly quite long. This path shows you there's going to be lots of copy and paste and there might be a lot of typo errors. Whereas this path, you simply just append another array position and then you can make use of it automatically because we have the for each ready. The for each will loop around all of these positions anyway for us and there won't be any issues over there if you add more and more characters. I think this is the best approach because it helps with maintainability and it also makes the code look a lot cleaner. You're not checking for every single one of the characters you're just checking if it matches one of these positions. And now in code wars, when you actually press test, it only tests the ones that are down here. If you then press submit, it will actually do a full test, including some of the hidden ones. So let's hit submit. And we actually get ourselves a little error because we still have our B and C in there. So let's remove that and hit attempt again. There we go. You can see that it's testing for null and it's got additional test cases that we don't currently have access to. But what we can do just to kind of have a look at this is using the system library, we can actually use a console.write line and we can try and print the string out and see what happens when we press attempt. You can see the past again, but you might be able to see the values that they're using. So abracadabra, we got a pear tree with a space and then lots of different characters and then all of these characters inside here. And then the last one is actually just empty. So you can see that even something as crazy as this our code is still matching it because it's checking the characters one by one. So if you want to see me solve any specific code whilst programs, then please put them in the comments below and I'll see you in the next one. This video was made possible by my awesome Patreons, DP Unique, Tominator and Buddy Woody 9 Thank you for your continued support. I have a C Sharp Masterclass Udemy course coming up soon. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and join the Discord server for exclusive discounts and promotions.